Hey, welcome to church. Happy Easter. It's great to welcome you to church from my home to yours. My name's Alarine and I'm one of the team here at Riverside Vineyard. You know, it's such a hard time at the moment, but it's really good that we can gather together. Today we're going to worship for about 15 minutes together with Jamie and Kathy and a full band. It's a special day and the worship team have worked really hard to produce something really special. But it's one week only, so I just wanted to also share kind of what's going to happen over this next little while together um, and really help us think about the morning and what would really work for us. So make yourself comfortable, grab yourself a drink, switch off any screens and other distractions and let's really remain connected with each other. Whether you've got family at home, um, engage everybody, including the kids, maybe your dog, your cat, who knows. And up on the right hand side of the screen, there's going to be an opportunity to chat with people. Say hello. Let's be really lovely to each other. Let us know where you are, what you're eating, drinking. And really let's, you know, let's really engage with what's going on. You may also want to connect with others, either before or after the service, and maybe have a virtual coffee with somebody. We want to pray for and with each other. You can ask for prayer in the chat area. The best time to do that is really after the service, but you may also want to connect with one or two people from the small group. And that's a really good way to stay connected with each other. So I just want to share some scripture with us this morning before we start our service. And this is from Colossians. And it is this is entitled the supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that, every, so that in everything he might have the, the supremacy. For, so for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice and his death and resurrection so that we might have life. And whether we know you or not, may we just have a greater understanding of all that you've done for us. Lord, thank you that you are the same today, yesterday and forever. And we thank you once again for the gift of Jesus, in whose name we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> That lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night And through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could
I've been restored to the love of God. I thought it was the end, but it's just begun. I'm a sinner saved By the grace of God Not for what I've done But for what I've known Yes, you my Jesus my strength and fortress, my hope and purpose, you are all this and more. of God Not for what I've done But for what I've known Yes, my Jesus Let's try
that before you we knew who you were you sent Jesus to die for us thank you for the demonstration of your amazing and that there's nothing that we can do to earn your love it's all been done through Jesus and we thank you so much for the gift and the sacrifice of Jesus and we honour you and we bless you and we praise your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
thank you so much, uh, Jamie and Kathy and band, for leading us into worship. Now is the opportunity to give um, to give to God and the work of this church. It helps us do all the things we really want to do. The storehouse, which gives food to our most vulnerable in the community, to our youth and our kids work and so much more. We want to be continue to be generous, to be a generous family at this time. Many of you give through standing order and that's our favourite way. So thank you for that or by bank transfer. But if you give in those ways, please remember your giving now. If you normally give through the offering bucket, that now's the time. There's a button above my head. You click on that and that goes through to the giving page. If you're a, if you're a taxpayer, please tick the box um, so that we can claim back tax at no cost to you. And it increases your gift by 25%. So, so thank you. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your generosity that you spared nothing for us. And all that we have comes from you. So we ask that what we give today, you would multiply that for the work of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now I'm going to hand back over to Rob. Hey, welcome once again. My name is Rob. I'm part of the team here. It's so good to welcome you from our home. Um, if you, if this is your first time joining us, you are so, so welcome. Um, and if you'd like to connect with us, the best way to do that, if you're on the live stream, why don't you just click on the connection button, which is just above me, um, and you just take a minute to fill out the form there. We'll get in touch with you. We will send you a goodie bag and that will include some well-earned chocolate. So please do that. Um, if you're accessing this later on, then why don't you just visit the, uh, the website, riversidevineyard.com slash I'm dash new and you will find the details there. Um, if you're exploring faith, you're exploring who this Jesus is that we've been singing and talking about, um, why don't you click on the Why Jesus link above me as well. Um, you can access that at riversidevineyard.com slash why dash Jesus. We would love you just to kind of explore who this Jesus is, who we love so much um, and who we're talking about. You know, it says Easter Sunday. We're so excited to be just celebrating his l new life that he gives us that is freely available to us all. Now, I'm going to share a few things. Um, the first thing we want to share today is an update on Storehouse. For those of you that don't know, Storehouse is our compassion ministry. We've been so busy just responding to the current needs in the communities around us. Here's Hannah to tell us a little bit more. Hi, everyone. Um, just an update on Storehouse for me. So Storehouse is continuing to operate. Um, we are more needed than ever in our community uh, and we're working with other local churches and local organisations to make sure that we are serving those most in need in our community with food at this time. Uh, we've been working over the last few weeks to develop a delivery service um, and so we made our first deliveries uh, this week um, and that's gone really well so thank you to everybody involved in that. Um, please do keep an eye out on the uh, Storehouse page on the church website. This will give you lots of updated information about the things that we most need at this time. Uh, donations can be dropped off at the church centre on Wednesday and Thursday between 10 and 2. Um, there's also a donate button so you you can give financially over and above your regular giving um, so that we can buy food and toiletries that we need. Um, we'd also love to set up some local drop-off points around the community. Um, so what we're looking for is for people that would be willing to use their front door as a drop-off point um, so that people within the church as they're out and about doing their weekly shop or their daily exercise uh, can drop a bag of food outside your front door and then they can be brought into the church centre and be sorted in one go. Um, just thank you so much to everybody for all of your support and your prayers. Um, it's just so such a privilege to be able to serve our community in this way at this time. So thank you and God bless. Hannah, thank you so much. It's really great to hear what you and the, and the incredible team have been up to. Now to give and to respond, why don't you go and visit riversidevineyard.com slash storehouse or you can email Hannah directly um, at hannah at riversidevineyard.com.
Now, um, you probably noticed right now the world is a crazy place. And one of the things we want to continue doing is to pray, pray, pray some more. Um, so we want to invite you to um, 24 hours of prayer. And that's going to start next weekend, Sunday, the 19th of April, starting at 7 p.m. in the evening. And we're going to start by lighting a candle in our front windows. We're going to do that on a Zoom call together. Um, and we'd love you to join us in doing that. And then we would love you to um, to sign up to pray for an hour slot over the following 24 hours. Now, um, you can do that through the website link that we're going to send around to you. Um, but you can use that hour to pray in lots of different ways. And we'll give you some ideas that 24-7 prayer uh, make freely available as well. You can pray at your home, whether on your own or, or whether there's others around with you that you want to pray with. Or you could use part of your daily exercise to go out and prayer walk for the communities that are around us. It'd be great to pray into all that's going on right now. And then on Monday evening, we're going to gather all back together um, over another Zoom call to pray together. It'll be great to just see lots and lots of people um, out for that. We just want to take this opportunity to pray as much as we can into the situation that we find ourselves in right now. Now, the next thing I want to tell you about is, is a story um, just demonstrating some of the things that we, we can still do in reaching out to those around us. Hi, I'm Denise. Um, and this week I was able to connect um, with six clients from my friend's charity, which is the Hillingdon Brain Tumor and Injury Group. It really was such a blessing. I was able to offer prayer to one lady and actually pray for another. And it was gratefully received. Um, she just felt so uh, much more comforted after the prayer. Another lady I um, connected with uh, by telephone was um, a lady who had been unable to share the fact that she'd lost a, a friend and she said that it had been really weighing her down. Um, she also told me about the cat on her lap and what she was going to have for dinner. Um, it was such a blessing for them and for me. I'd not done anything like this before. Um, and so, you know, really, I'm, I'm just encouraging you to uh, to reach out to others because it's such a precious gift to um, be able to listen to others and um, and to just be of use to um, to others. Um, so take care, everyone, and stay safe. Wow, Denise, thank you so much. What a great story of how we can still reach out into the communities around us, to the people that we know um, and the people that we see, even though we might not be able to get quite as close as we usually do. You know, that thing of connection is one of the most important things we keep on doing right now, especially at this time. Um, and one of the best ways to stay connected um, at Riverside Vineyard, you know, throughout the year, throughout different times, is through our small groups. Um, and so we just want to encourage you, if you're not already part of a small group, we would love you to get in touch with us. You know, one way would just be by chatting with someone perhaps you know who might be part of a small group. Ask them what small group they're part of. That'd be a great way to do that. Um, otherwise, you can go on to uh, the small group link, which you'll see above my head, riversidevineyard.com slash small groups. Or you can email small groups at riversidevineyard.com. Next up, we're going to have a talk from the Bible. That's going to come from Andy. Andy's our senior pastor. Um, but before we hand over to him, let me just pray for us and for him um, and that we will just really hear what the Lord wants to speak to us today. Jesus, I thank you for this day, Easter Sunday, when we celebrate all that you have won. And Lord, I want to ask that as we listen to what Andy shares today, would you open our ears and would you open our hearts to what you want to say to us? Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us wherever we are right now? Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone, from our home to yours. Great to connect today. Just a massive thank you to Ash and to Kathy and the team who've put in a huge amount of work to serve us so amazingly with our worship on Easter Sunday. Thank you so much to all that were involved in that. Just before we get into what I'm really going to talk about this morning, um, just point to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 where we see that if we want our land to be healed, we need to turn, humble ourselves 
and pray. So I'm calling us as a church community to pray for God's kingdom to come for 24 hours next Sunday evening through to Monday. Um, we've shared the details already. Really easy to sign up for one hour prayer slots or more if you want. Uh, fast if you would like to and that's possible for you. Uh, we need to pray. So let's come together and pray. So Easter Sunday, so important in the Christian calendar. It's the crescendo of an amazing week. Uh, Palm Sunday, the Last Supper, the cross, Jesus' death and burial. Uh, Easter Saturday, that day between death and life. Um, and then today, Easter Sunday, where we celebrate the empty tomb and the resurrected Jesus because he is alive. If you're a Christian like me, today is such an amazing day. Uh, maybe you feel like you've been locked down all week. It's been uh, felt like you're in a tomb. Well, today's good news. There's life. There's resurrection. If you're connecting with us today uh, and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I'm delighted you are with us today. And I hope that what we share um, is helpful to you. Uh, I must admit I'm a little bit gutted today. We'd normally be baptizing a bunch of people at the end of our service, but obviously we can't today. If you're someone who said yes to Jesus but not yet been baptized, baptism is the next step for you. Uh, we'll have a baptism service as soon as we can when we're back together, um, but you get your shorts and your t-shirt ready now. I've been keeping an eye on what some other churches are teaching from today. Uh, some have chosen an account where Jesus' disciples are locked in a room and Jesus appears to them. Um, you can find the story in John chapter 20. It's a great story. In fact, the thing happens twice. Um, and so if you feel locked up right now, um, take a read of John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31 and see how you can find Jesus or more accurately how he finds you in that kind of lockdown situation. It's a great story but I felt it might just be a little bit too difficult for some of us today. So we're actually going to uh, look at the next chapter in John's Gospel, chapter 21. Do feel free to follow along um, with us this morning. It's, the, it's a story about a breakfast on a beach. Now, I love a good breakfast. Bacon, pancakes, maple syrup does it for me. I also love a good beach. Um, it's my happy place. Caribbean beach, white sand, warm sea, happy place. And so a breakfast on a beach, we're going to take a look at the story starting in verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Good to remember that several of the disciples were fishermen. So this is going back to an old way of life. Even though they had seen the resurrected Jesus, that did not make them immune from going back to old ways. The same can be true for us. In challenging times when pressure is on, we can find ourselves doing things which we'd rather not do or that maybe we used to. Statistics right now show that many people are drinking way more than they did a month ago. One online wine retailer has reported a 1.5,000% increase in sales. And people are marking the end of a working day through having a drink or three um, because they can't go out to the gym or play sport or go out for dinner with friends. Now, the point is an alcohol. I, I enjoy a glass of wine with dinner from time to time. But it's simply that patterns of behavior that we thought had shifted can reappear when we're stressed or anxious or challenged. So it's good to be aware of that. Verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. When we get caught up in our way of doing life, we can so easily miss Jesus. The disciples did. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? And I love this. It's a reminder that Jesus is always calling out to us, whether or not we've recognized him personally in our lives. And I believe he's doing the same today to every one of us, wherever we are. 
No, they answered. In other words, they hadn't caught any fish. Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Doing what Jesus said, obedience, is key to a relationship with him. But following him also involves risk. The disciples have been fishing all night, and so to let down the nets again is risking more hard work and looking silly. Obedience plus risk releases God's future into our lives. Verse 7, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus must have got up early too. He'd managed to catch some fish even though the disciples couldn't. Now that's a bit gutting. If you're a fisherman and then you find out that a carpenter is better than fishing than you. So think about an area of life that you're really good at. Jesus is better. He knows more. Now that might either upset you or fill you with great sense of relief. That's what it does for me. I love that Jesus knows more than me. And then the end of the story from verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Here's the thought that I want to share with us this morning. I love the Last Supper, but there is something so beautiful and poignant about the first breakfast. I love the celebration of communion. I hope you do too. I love sharing that last weekend as part of our Palm Sunday services on Good Friday at our eight o'clock service earlier this morning. But wouldn't you have loved to be there on that beach? I would. It probably took place soon after the resurrection. There's a miraculous catch of fish and that's pretty cool. Someone has counted them. There's 153 fish. It's a bit odd that someone did that. There's a barbecue going, just imagine the smell. But it's not about those things. This story is all about the chef. The one who was dead is alive and cooking breakfast. I just want to spend a few minutes focusing in on verse 12. Jesus said to his disciples, and I believe to you and me as well, Come and have breakfast. So here are three things. Firstly, this is an amazing breakfast. Why is it amazing? At one level, it's just breakfast. You've had breakfast before, so have I, so are the disciples. I believe it's an amazing breakfast because of the inviter. It's the resurrected Jesus. Now, this breakfast on this beach may have triggered all sorts of memories for the disciples. There's a charcoal fire. The only other reference in John's Gospel is to the night before the crucifixion as Peter finds himself at a charcoal fire and denies Jesus three times. On a happier note, it was on a beach that Jesus had said, follow me to Peter and to James and to John, the sons of Zebedee. And that call had turned their lives upside down. That's what a call from Jesus does in our lives too. Bread and fish are part of the Passover meal that they celebrated at the Last Supper. So then maybe they remembered that Last Supper as Jesus shares bread with them. 
And maybe they remember the time when there was a crowd of 5,000 plus people, they're hungry, and a young boy has remembered his packed lunch, and they're all fed from this one lunch. You remember what the lunch was? Bread and fish. And maybe it just reminds them and us that Jesus is a miracle worker. You see, this invitation to breakfast isn't an ordinary invitation because the invitation comes from the resurrected Jesus. Secondly, it's a personal invitation. You know, you and I can have a chat with someone and that's a lovely thing to do, but sharing food takes things to a whole different place, to a much deeper place, one of connection and intimacy. And that's the kind of friendship that Jesus invites us into, not as acquaintances, but as friends. It's personal. And so we need to respond to that invitation for ourselves. You may have been someone who's always gone to church because family dragged you along, or maybe culture just expects it of you. And maybe you felt God nudging you for years without ever saying yes personally to him. Well, he's inviting you today. For those of you who've been a Christian like me for years and years, it's a fresh invitation today to come and have breakfast with Jesus, to come and sit down with him like friends do. And the third thing, it's an invitation for right now. You know, if someone has cooked you breakfast, it's just bad form to say, I'll be there tomorrow. I'm a bit busy now, it's not a great time in my life. You know, the breakfast is ready now and we don't want to let it spoil. For those of you that know me, you'll have heard me say this before, that the best time to say yes to Jesus is always now. Jesus is inviting us to himself right now, and that is all of us. You know, whether we've said yes to Jesus before, he's inviting you now. And those of you that have not said yes to him before, his invitation is fresh for you today. And so I would love to lead us in a prayer right now. It might help you for you to just close your eyes so you can be fully present in this moment with Jesus. And maybe it's helpful for you just to imagine you're on a beach. There's um, a barbecue going on. You can smell the food in the air. You're hungry. The food looks great. And you hear a voice saying, come and have breakfast. And something in you knows that this is Jesus. He's calling you to sit down with him as a friend, to share food, to do life together. So let's pray. Jesus, I'm so grateful for your invitation to me that tells me that you love me and that you welcome me. And so Jesus, I choose to stop what I'm doing, going my own way, and I choose to turn around and say yes to you, to sit down with you, to enter into friendship with you. So Jesus, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I would know deep in my heart that you love me and that I'm a part of your family. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today for the first time, there's gonna be a little button that appears in the chat section that is a way of just digitally raising a hand this morning to say yes to Jesus. And we'd love you to do that if you've prayed that for the first time. And once you've done that, why didn't you jump onto the prayer section? Um, because we would love to connect with you and encourage you today. But why don't we all just stay in this moment of prayer? I would love to just invite the Holy Spirit uh, to come and fill us afresh today. You might be helped just to hold your hands open to him this morning because he's alive and he wants to release life to us. So come Holy Spirit, release life to us today. Would you breathe upon us afresh today? Fill us with awe, fill us with wonder, fill us with that taste of resurrection life here and now. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. If you're unwell today, if you're in pain, I had this sense that God was wanting to release healing today. So if you're able to, why don't you just place a hand on where it hurts in your body? Maybe uh, it's your mind, maybe it's your heart. And let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, in your name, we speak healing. I speak healing today to sore necks, 
to backs, to arms, to legs, to, to high blood pressure return to normal, to those with asthma, to breathing conditions, to skin conditions, to mental health issues right now. We speak the peace of God in Jesus' name. Let healing come, let restoration come in Jesus' name right now. And if in this moment you've sensed God at work in you, would you just ping us a message because we'd love to celebrate that with you. And I felt this today that Lord also wanted to release peace into life. So if you need peace today, why don't you put your hand on your heart? And so in Jesus name, we speak peace. Jesus, Prince of Peace, let your peace reign over our hearts and minds today. Where we're anxious, where we're fearful, where we're troubled, release peace today in Jesus' name. Lord, be with us today. Amen. This is the point in our service where we'd normally baptize some people. As I say, I'm gutted that we can't do that. But Ash and the team are gonna lead us in a celebration song to close our service. Uh, please do join in at home. It's a celebration song. You might wanna stand, get some air into your lungs, join in, sing out with us. Um, after that, we'd love you to hang around. You can chat with one another, uh, grab a hot cross bun. Uh, you might want prayer this morning. You can jump into the prayer space. There are people there there, uh, that are ready to pray for you today or maybe you jump onto a chat with some friends or your small group and you chat with them. Happy Easter, God bless you, have a wonderful day. I was buried beneath my shame could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried
chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were